the role of the estrobolome is important for gut, estrogen, and metabolism. So what is it and why do you need to be concerned about it? It's actually comprised of all the microorganisms that play a critical role in our health. They contain little proteins that help communicate within cells, they can actually influence your behavior and impact our susceptibility to autoimmune disorders and neuroendocrine disorders. I think it's important to define things like what actually is estrogen because that can be very helpful to understanding its impact on the gut microbiome. It's actually a key sex hormone involved in female re reproductive health as well as cardiovascular bone health, memory, and also regulation of body fat. Men make a little bit of estrogen as well, but women it predominates. So women actually produce three different kinds. The estrone, which is E1, it's made in our ovaries before menopause and can be converted into estradiol. It is the dominant estrogen after menopause and is created in fat tissue. Next is estradiol, which is E2. It's a major form of estrogen produced in the ovaries in premenopausal women and also produced in the adrenals and placenta. It is the most potent form of estrogen and plays a role in secondary sex characteristics, bone growth, heart health, as well as memory. Lastly is estriol. It's E3, it's the least potent, dominates during pregnancy, and is also manufactured by the placenta, and is also produced by gut bacteria. We know that estrogen can be found in plants as phytoestrogens and found in chemicals, which are called xenoestrogens. These are important because they can mimic estrogens and disrupt a healthy communication system in the body. So what is the interrelationship between the gut microbiome and estrogen? The health of your gut microbiome impacts how our body processes and packages up estrogen. There's a term called beta-glucuronidase, but it's an enzyme that helps process estrogen into a more active formulation. Basically, the more beta-glucuronidase you have created in the gut microbiome, the harder it is for your body to actually get rid of and process estrogen. So if you have too much of it and you can't process it, your body can't eliminate it, so it gets recirculated, which is actually not a good thing. It's commonly seen with dysbiosis, which I like to refer to affectionately as weeds in the garden. And some of the symptoms of these imbalances can actually be related to signs of estrogen dominance. So you can be bloated, you can have acne, you can have low libido, you have those crime scene heavy periods. You may have fibrocystic breasts and weight gain and hot flashes, as well as polycystic ovarian syndrome and potentially female dominated cancers. So it is something to take seriously. So how do we determine we have it? And if we do have it, how do we fix it? So I always feel that testing is critical. So doing the GI map, which is that DNA based stool test, doing the Dutch, which is a dried urine and saliva test are great starters. And depending on those results, utilizing a system of supplements and nutritional strategies, as well as potentially medications, sometimes bioidentical hormones can be very helpful. You want to incorporate it for fermented foods, pre and probiotic rich foods, fiber, cruciferous vegetables to help kind of package up that estrogen, re-inoculate the gut. You wanna reduce exposure to toxins in your personal care products, food and environment. You wanna sweat, you wanna exercise, you wanna manage your stress. And you know, one of the things that I've gotten more proactive about is using detox support programs, purification programs to help kind of layer in additional support for my female patients. Stay tuned for the next video in this series.